bin vor zweieinhalb Jahren in den Skiferien gewesen und habe, ähm, war ziemlich müde und bin, am, bin in der Toilette umgefallen und habe das Kinn am Lavabo ähm, angeschlagen und fiel anschließend auf den Boden. Complex defects of the alveolar jaw often require a staged approach prior to dental implant therapy. The gold standard in bone augmentation procedures is autologous bone. However, there are new modern techniques evolving more and more due to the limitations of autologous bone, which can be sometimes a very difficult surgery and also additional patient morbidity due to the recipient site. One interesting technique is the patient-specific allograft bone block from the human living donor. So the patient had an accident in the upper jaw with a severe bone defect, a severe horizontal defect with a vertical component as well. So first of all, we do the CBCT and then, as is always recommendable in implant, dental implant therapy, we do a backwards planning. So we insert our wax up of the final prosthetic solution and then we see where would we put our implants in the perfect prosthetic position and then we can see how much bone is missing, how much bone do we have to reconstruct here in this area and how should we design our customized allograft only bone blocks for this patient. So then we here designed two bone blocks which can be adjusted here perfectly on this alveoli bony defect, as well, what we can see here in this bone dummy. And uh, this is the first part of the surgery. So when we start with the surgery, after flap elevation, um, it's very important, of course, to show the whole defect size and the, the, the whole um, field of the surgery is visible. And then we can adopt and, um, our bone blocks and see the, the, the fit of the bone blocks. However, it's very important that we hydrate the blocks in, 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 in classic um, NACL solution for at least uh, 30 minutes and then we can adopt our bone blocks and see the, the, the fit of the bone blocks. And in this case um, the fit is perfect, uh, we don't need any more adjustments made neither on the bone blocks nor on the, on the, on the, on the defect itself. Yeah. And um, then we can apply the blocks and fixate the blocks with, um, with titanium screws, approximately 1.2 millimeters are used here in this case, but sometimes also 1.5 millimeters can be used. Um, everything is suitable here. Very important that we have a rotational stability of the two bone blocks. Very important that we have a very tension-free flap covering the bone blocks. And after that, we, um, we made sure that the, the, the closure of the flaps is primary and tension-free with two different layers. Yes. After the, um, the, the, the healing period, which should not exceed five to six months, um, because otherwise the resorption rate would be very risky, we should go to the re-entry. So this is very crucial uh, time dependent period. After five to six months, latest six months, we should perform the re-entry of these blo uh, bone blocks. Then we already matched with our planning beforehand and then we have a guided implant surgery in this case to make sure that we, um, we, we insert the implant in the position which we planned already forward um, for our prosthetic solution. And 
then it's very important with this allograft material that we use um, a, a type of GBR technique, so a contour augmentation here um, to, to, to stop the resorption process or at least to make sure we have like an additional safety um, that we don't have here a bone loss on the buccal side. Directly after the implant surgery, we performed an OPG, serves as a baseline, followed by a five month period of osseointegration. integration. After the period of five to six months again, we do the button connection here. In this case, we have sufficient keratinized uh, tissue surrounding the implant, so we went really for a very minimal um, flap design here before we insert our final prosthetic solution, which we did here in this case in collaboration with the prosthetic department of our clinic. To conclude, with the patient-specific allograft-only block technique, we don't have a technique that will make all the other techniques obsolete. We are still going to use autologous bone or also xenograft or allopластic material. But after careful patient selection, and in these very specific cases where we have a very advantageous or um, a, a, a very predictable bone defect, and also a bone defect that lasts for at least six months, then we have a really favorable technique here because it can completely avoid patient recipient site morbidity and maximize patient comfort and also clinician comfort for this uh, kind of pretty complex severe cases.